Harrison Bader had a massive weekend against Tampa Bay, but the Yankees lost the series and are now 10 games back in the division. So that got us thinking, is Harrison Bader enough for this team right now? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias, alongside my producer, Steve Granato. Steve, happy Monday. What's going on? Hello, hello, hello to all our lovely Locked On Yankees viewers and listeners, to our 2,300 Yankees fans on YouTube. Just a reminder, in case you didn't know, I know we have a lot of new ones. We do have an audio feed, so in case you uh, you know take the train or whatever, and you don't have uh, service, you can always download Locked On Yankees audio wise, and then listen to it that way. So just so you know, we know the audio listeners know that obviously, but uh, gotta gotta show some love to the audio side too. Hey, we got an A's preview. Of course, the A's and Yankees set to start a three game set tonight. It is Miners Monday, Stacy. I got to look around the entire Yankees minor league system. Which, by the way, there were some incredible performances this week the Yankees minor league system was on fire this week but first Stacey let's start with this weekend New York loses two of three down at the trop Bader however I mean what a massive weekend for him I mean it just and everything you could want it was more <laughs> it was more who expected this yeah, he no had he was just incredible I I said it the other day, what we were expecting from Harrison Bader, like don't expect too much, this and that. But after watching him this weekend, I feel like the fact that he's from New York is really helping him play here. And he's playing up to that. You know what I mean? Like he knows yeah. what it's like for people to be on the Yankees. And I feel like maybe he's one of those guys who's really going to do well in New York because he understands what it's like to play in the lights of New York. Yeah, it's kind of weird because, like, you don't really know Harrison Bader yet, yeah. right? Like, there's still not a lot of samples in a Yankee uniform yet. Um, this weekend, 6 for 11, he went deep twice, had a triple, drove in seven, and also didn't strike out Stacy. And yeah. not only that, but, like, all six of those hits, really, I mean, all of them made a difference. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> – the, uh, the hit that turned into the game-winning hit on Saturday um, – I thought it was hilarious because Christy Eckert, who used to be a Yankees beat writer, now is a Tampa beat writer and was talking about how loud it is at the trop when the Yankees play there. And she was talking about how loud it was in the bottom of the ninth when the Rays were trying to get something going against the Yankees and then Ian Hamilton closed it out. Um, yeah, most of the noise that this weekend was for the Yankees. I hate to say it, but it's true because... Um, it's just the way it is when the Yankees play in Tampa. Like, no matter what happens, there's more Yankee fans than sure. Tampa but fans. I mean, and when still... Bader hit the home runs, when he hit that hit, it was like they were playing a home game. Yeah. Still, though, lost two of three. And it wasn't we'll a sweep. In... It wasn't a sweep. It wasn't a sweep. <laughs> what did I say uh, on Friday? <laughs> congratulations. You were correct. Way to go. Um, but the, the bigger issue here is, yes, we're going to, I mean, I might as well just say it now. We're going to talk about it later. But Aaron Judge is set to return Tuesday. So yeah. just so you know. Um, but is is Bader enough? Like, it, it, like you don't really know what J Judge is going to be when he comes back here. How right. much lingering pain does he have? And he was cold in the first place anyway before that. Yeah. Is wh what can we really expect out of Harrison Bader? Again, I just said, like, we don't really know what he's going to do in a in Yankee pinstripes. Stacey, what are you expecting out of him realistically at this point? Like, is he going to be this dude? I don't think he's going to be this dude the entire season, but I feel like he's going to have series like this every once in a while where he's just the man, like every other player does. Like, you know, yeah. some guys get hot, some guys get cold, some guys step up. And they have an entire series where they do well. And I feel like he can be that, you know, this but, is just other. I mean, this this weekend yeah. was like otherworldly from him. It was so funny. <laughs> well, that's where I'm getting at is he had this weekend and mm -hmm. it wasn't enough. Right. Right. Well, I mean, um, it wasn't his fault that Garrett Cole gave up six runs. I mean, yeah. sure. I mean, <laughs> sure. But I mean, it <laughs> Look, you can point fingers all day long, but it gets down to brass tacks, dude. A loss is a loss. Sure. True. 
that's true. But, um, you know, I'm happy that I'm not happy with the way the game went on Sunday, but I'm happy that the Yankees were in all three games, right? They weren't killed by Tampa because Tampa has had a habit of making teams look absolutely horrible and beating up on them so far this year. And the fact that an injury riddled Yankees who don't even have three fifths of the starting rotation that they wanted to have at the beginning of the season, they don't have judge. They don't have Stanton, even missing Donaldson is kind of a problem just on defense. Um, you know, the fact that the Yankees went in there and they weren't outscored by that much, that's a win in my book. Just like, um, what's the word? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just, it could have been so much worse this weekend and it wasn't. I mean, again, they didn't get swept. Everyone was just expecting them to go to Tropicana Field. It's been a house of horrors for them the last few seasons. And hey, they won a game. I'm happy with that. I'm fine. So Okay, you you seem way more optimistic than I thought you were going to be. I'm not going to lie. I know, I, especially I, considering how awful Sunday's loss. Oh, had Sunday was terrible. I know it was terrible. But so you lose two of three. I mean, you realistically could have lost all three. Yeah. You also, in fairness, realistically could have won all three. Yeah. yeah. Is that giving you any hope at all for the AL East, or is ten games back mm. mid May too much? I feel like right now. They, they need to not pay attention to the AL East at all. Not the, you know, the top of it. They need to worry about Baltimore. They need to worry about Toronto. They need to worry about Boston. They're the ones who are closer to them than Tampa. Forget about Tampa. Just look at the guys that are right in front of you, especially Boston, because they're right there, and Toronto. Um, you know, I've seen very strange things happen in baseball. And, you know, a 10-game lead is great on April, uh, excuse me, May 8th, but it's not ironclad anything can happen okay sure of course it can but but I mean... yeah no just don't even think about the east right now just <laughs> think about you know well i mean that's the, the tune they're singing right like that's what the players are saying like oh i'm not thinking about it they're they're lying oh yeah they're no lying. they're they're lying. they're all thinking about it <laughs> they have to be of course there's no way you're not thinking about it <laughs> i mean the al east is an incredible division and sure. Like legitimately at this point, all five teams could be playoff teams, <laughs> even the Yankees, because once they get healthy, they'll probably pay, play a little better than they're playing right now. And it's just when you look at that division compared to every other one, it's just like, wow, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's the best division in baseball. Mm -hmm. There's no denying that. All teams are over 500 right now. Um, and like you said, all teams could you could argue are primed, right? Like, yeah, yeah I don't think Boston. I think Boston's playing better than they are. Fair to be I fair. I think so too. Yeah, they're pitching. I don't, I don't want the Boston fans hold. who listen to this show because there are some high. Um, I don't want them getting mad at us for saying that, but they are playing above their heads right yeah, now. Their pitching staff is. Come on, man. Let's be real. Like I, <laughs> I, I like Brian Bayo, but Brian Bayo is not should not be pitching third in your rotation or second or whatever he's pitching. It's just not fair <laughs> uh, to him. Uh, speaking of pitching, Stacy Garrett Cole. Let's let's kind of get into that. Um, Five innings, eight hits, six runs, five earned, a pair of walks, and six Ks. That sixth inning. Uh, let's talk about the sixth inning. Of course, they lost a six-run lead, which obviously stings. Uh, would you have pulled Garrett Cole if you were Aaron Boone? Yes. Um, he was looking iffy the, the inning before that, and the Rays hit the starter better the third time through the lineup they've been doing that all season and i feel like those are the kind of numbers that boone should have on his ipad and i don't know why they didn't and i know it's garrett cole i know he's been pitching at lights out all season but you could tell he was kind of losing it in the fourth and i know if Felt like it was too soon for them to or the fifth and it felt like the sixth would be too soon to pull him but <sighs> I could feel it coming. <laughs> it's, I was like, I felt like mm, six isn't enough here. I really, I don't know. Something's wrong here. Something's not right. You know, there were a couple of hits that guys um, hit for outs, balls that guys hit for outs that were hit hard. And I thought to myself, Oof, mm, mm, he's not missing as many bats as I want him to at this point because he looked better earlier in the game. And um, yeah, no, I would have pulled him. And I don't understand why they didn't have someone warming up sooner. Well, they had Jimmy Cordero. They had Jimmy Cordero ready before that Betancourt homer. Um, no, but I mean, it should have been sooner than that. Sooner like, than that. Yeah, but yeah. Saying, yeah, he was ready at that point. Yeah. Um, and that's what Aaron Boone said, that he was 
like, look, it's Garrett Cole. And and I get that. I totally get that instinct. Yeah. I 100 percent understand that instinct. Mm-hmm. Um, considering he is pitching, he's the best pitcher in baseball. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah. man. It's Garrett Cole. Uh, and he has gotten out of some jams already this season. He got like, out of last yeah. his last start, right? Yeah. He didn't have his best stuff and he got out of jams. So it's it stands to reason. If he had gotten out of it, we wouldn't be talking about it. I know. But right. like I said, you know how I get that yeah. feeling? When yeah, I'm watching a game, I, I had that feeling. I was like, oh, no, six isn't going to be enough. This is going to be bad because it's Tampa. Ugh. Yeah. Um, score a homerless streak ends at 51 innings. Uh, he was the first Yankee since 2003 to uh, start the season with 50 consecutive innings without allowing a home run. Jeff Weaver. Can you believe that much? Uh, 2003. Even Stacy doesn't remember that one. No, uh, I, I kind of do, but I vaguely. Yeah. Vaguely. Um. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's a tough one. Let us know in the comments section, would you have pulled Garrett Cole? That's a tough, let's be real. Dude, that's a tough decision. Yeah. It is hard I don't know if I would have pulled him, but I think I would have had someone warming up earlier. Yeah. That's it fair. just seemed like things were falling fair. apart sooner. I don't know. It's totally fair. Yeah. Um, Stacey, you wanted to give a quick shout out before the end of this first segment. Aaron Hicks. He got his first extra base hit of 2023 on Sunday and the look of relief on his face and even his teammates were just so excited for him. And he drove in a run and he scored a run and, you know, when the game was going well for the Yankees and I felt, I just felt happy for him. So good for him getting that monkey off his bat back. And uh, it was a double and uh, maybe he'll hit a home run next. Yeah. That had to have sheesh man. Finally, (laughs) Um, the Yankees will face off with Oakland who Oakland is coming off their first series win of the season, by the way. Um, And weirdly enough, we're going to talk about our pitching matchups a little bit later in a couple of minutes, Stacey, but JP Sears on the mound Monday night. (laughs) Uh, You can catch that game and the whole series and the whole season, by the way, on Sirius XM, download the Sirius XM app and hatch every single game. Tonight's game seven Oh five coming up. It's Monday minors Monday, some incredible performances, on the pitching side, on the fielding side, on the offensive side. We're going to talk about that when we come back. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hey, back here on Locked On Yankees. It's Miners Monday. We're going to talk about the minor leagues here, of course, as we always do on Monday. And thanks for making us, by the way, your first listen coming up on tomorrow's show, Stacey, for the everydayers out there. We're going to be talking about Luis Severino. He had some comments over the weekend, and it's not the <laughs> first time he's talked about this. So we're going to talk about how the Yankees have handled Luis Severino, how Luis Severino feels about the Yankees. So that's coming up tomorrow. Make sure to hit subscribe. As promised, Stacy, every Monday we talk about the Yankees minor league system. Today, of course, is no different. The Yankees double A pitching staff right now, Stace. <laughs> we talked about it at the start of the season, the very first minor league Monday. Yeah. We're like, watch out for the Somerset pitching staff. Take a look at what they did this week. Clayton Beater pitched on Friday, top prospect in the Yankee system. Six innings, shutout. Three hits, a walk, career high, 11 strikeouts. Not done. Richard Fitz, six scoreless. Will Warren, six scoreless. Three starts this week for the Somerset Patriots. 18 (laughs) shutout innings from their starting pitching staff. It is incredible that the Yankees' developmental staff after, let's be frank, kind of gutting it last year, losing three big prospects and four, if you count Sears, can do this not in Tampa, but in <laughs> Somerset. Like, already at double-A, you have Beater, Fitz, and Warren just 
straight up shoving. Just it, it, it's honestly incredible that they're able to pull this off. Um, it was a, a massive week for the Somerset Patriots. Uh, Austin Wells, number three prospect in the Yankee system, is back. If you remember uh, the big injury bug week that had Rortvet down and, you know, everybody died that, that week, uh, the catching <laughs> side. Uh, Austin Wells also, he, he fractured a rib that week in spring training. He returned and monster, just monster week. Uh, first game back, two-run RBI, double then he homered on Friday, which was a go-ahead shot in a scoreless ball game. Ended up being two nothing. Saturday, he went back to back with a couple of home runs with Jason Dominguez, and then homered again on Sunday. So three straight games for Austin Wells. He's reached base in every game he's already played in this week, uh, or this past week, I should say. So Austin Wells, the Yankees are thinking of maybe fast tracking this kid. Mm. Um, we've you know talked about it already. Stace that the Yankees at the major league level just really aren't getting production out of their catchers. Um, and I think, you know, with Wart Vet returning to Scranton Wilkesbury now, and now Austin Wells back in action and, and immediately making an impact and immediately winning games for the Somerset Patriots, it's not too far out of the question. It's only a week. I get that, but watch out for Austin Wells. That's really the point of this whole segment every week. Guys, you need to be watching out for. Keep your eye on Austin Wells here. Um, and just a side note, one more thing for Somerset. TJ Rumfield, still hot. A couple of homers this week and hit a grand slam. Just a monster week for the Somerset Patriots. Uh, speaking of monster weeks, monster seasons. Last week from Hudson Valley, we talked about Aaron Polensky, mm -hmm. unranked, still hot. He is slugging, Stacy. 17 games. That's not a typo you're looking at. Oh my God. Eight, 64. <laughs> Eight, 64 slugging percentage in 17 games. 17 games. I get it. It's a month, essentially, of single-A baseball. Uh, he leads the South Atlantic League with nine home runs. That's not who I want to talk about today, weirdly <laughs> enough, because we talked about him last week. Danny Watson, unranked prospect in the Yankee system. Massive kid, 6'7", 22-year-old right-hander from VCU. He has this crazy whipping sidearm delivery. Uh, and he's been working with Greg Weissert. He was working with Greg Weissert over the offseason, and it is paying off in a massive way. This week, Stacey, and the last couple weeks, he retired 20, I shouldn't say retired. His, he had 20 straight outs that were strikeouts. <laughs> there were hits and walks mixed in, but 20 outs recorded, all strikeout, all strikeouts. Uh, this ended on Sunday when he got a ground out. Uh, <laughs> In the month, uh, in over his last five outings, uh, that's when these 20 strikeouts have occurred. Se I had a seven strikeout performance back on April the 30th, uh, seven and a third innings of work, two runs allowed uh, over over the month of, uh, from the end of April and in, in, into, into May here. Just ridiculous. Danny Watson, guy that is on no one's radar. Let's be <laughs> real. Uh, ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's just, I don't even, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. <laughs> that's ridiculous, right? Like yeah. 20 strikeouts? Like what's insane? Uh that that's maybe one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Uh not only this season, but just ever. Ever. Yeah. Um, let's go down to Tampa. We haven't given a lot of Tampa love. Uh tons of pitching. So you might remember this name, Stace. Justin Lang. L-A-N-G-E. This was the Luke Voigt trade. Mm. <laughs> uh came over to the Yankee system. He was the 31st, 34th overall pick in 2020 uh, with, of course, by the San Diego Padres. He was a composition round A. Um, pitched five shutout against Bradenton this week with 10 strikeouts. Um, matched a, a season and career high. Ended up being a combined one hitter and a one nothing victory for the Tampa Tarpons. Did the same exact line with five innings and 10 strikeouts, a shutout ball against uh, the Dunedin Blue Jays earlier this week. So I'm sure Yankees fans will love to hear that the Yankees the minor league system are also beating up on the Blue Jays side. Uh, this is a big, big arm. Upper 90s, uh, he hit his fastest pitch this week in that aforementioned outing, 98.7 with a sinker. Um, the only thing about him, and this is not you know totally different, he has some control issues, but a <laughs> lot of guys do that. Uh, that's the like number one problem in any prospect everywhere. 
Um, but again, just a guy to look out for. Justin Lang, that's the Luke Voigt trade. He is not in the Yankees' top 30 uh, in any list that I could find. So, But a guy to, again, keep your eye on, 98.7. He was a high school arm, mind you, high school kid. So for him to be this young and hitting 98.7, that's, that's legit. Um, and another just side note, because we had so many ridiculous performances this week. Jared Serna, another guy that you probably haven't really heard of, casually 11 for six his last 16 a pair of homers three doubles three walks seven rbis just casual casual jared cerna uh Ooh. popping off again we haven't given up a ton of love for the tampa tarpons this season so i wanted to make sure we did that this week um and then just one quick trip to scranton wilkesbury andrew Shaparo is still on fire um five games in may eight rbis and 21 plate appearances one strikeout get this, this is coming from our friend Connor Foley, friend of the show. Andre Shaparo started the season 0 for 29 with three walks and 13 strikeouts. Terrible numbers. Since then, slash line 337, 406, 721. That's 86 at bats, nine homers, 20 driven in, 10 walks, 18 strikeouts. Strikeouts are still up. Mm. Most guys are. It's 2023. Yeah. But uh, Andre Shaparo, man. Uh, I'm turning into a believer at this point. He's, he's really figuring it out. And then one last thing here, Cole Calhoun re, uh, joined the rail riders this week. I'm a massive Cole Calhoun fan. I love this guy. I've always loved this guy. Um, nine for his first 19, three doubles, a Homer and five RBIs to start his rail riders career. Great start. Great start. I mean, there are, this was the best week in the Yankee system. There were so many guys that I had to really, I had to cut. <laughs> there was so many really good performances this week um but we do this every week again if you are new here and are checking this out for the first time make sure to hit that subscribe button because we do miners monday every week where we're highlighting some of the guys that i mean let's be frank a lot of these guys unranked that you haven't heard of aaron polensky danny watson justin lang guys you haven't heard of before you can only find that right here on locked on yankees uh we're going to talk about the upcoming Oakland series in just a moment. Of course, you can catch that series on Sirius XM starting tonight at 7.05. Again, hot, cold, heating up, and your pitching matchups when we come back. Series with the Oakland A's. Three games set starting tonight. Stacy, it's a new series. So, of course, we always have hot, cold, and heating up. If you're new here, we do this every series as well. Who's hot? Who's cold? Who's heating up? Stacy? let's start with who is hot. We'll give it to Ian Hamilton, who picked up his first save for the Yankees on Saturday against Tampa in a not so easy situation because it's Tampa and they're good and they were threatening at one point and he just was unbelievable. He's been unbelievable so far this season. He has a 1.42 ERA and came out of nowhere. And he's just doing amazing to the point where Aaron Boone trusted him in that situation. I mean, it's yeah. not easy. Only game he won that week. Did you see his post-game comments, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'll close. I'll set up whatever, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll do whatever like, you want I, me to do. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll load the, uh, the rack of balls if you need them for BP. Like, <laughs> whatever, man. Uh, I love that. I love that mentality. Yeah. Uh, Stacy. I feel like we need to re- we need to like shuffle how this works because whenever we're talking about hot, we're always like super happy, and then we get to yeah, cold, and then and we get like, to oh, cold, yeah, and it's like, sucks. oh, what a bummer. Yeah. Yin and Yang, <laughs> Stacy, who's cold? Uh, Tiggy, poor Kyle Higashioka. Um, I mean, he's not the regular catcher, which doesn't help because it's not hard to, or it's not hard, it's not easy to play only like twice a week, and then you know yeah. expect to hit the ball and do things but he's just not really doing anything even when he's playing it's just sad at this point yeah. i mean jose he's... trevino picked it up a little bit but higgy's just yeah he's still really cold yeah he's not forcing his way he's not forcing aaron boone's hand to make him start right he's not doing that right now right um maybe he needs to break out the world baseball classic gear again just bust yeah. out the, the 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 red white and blue <laughs> Just bust it out again. Find, find some of that Trey Turner magic. Yeah. Um, speaking of finding some magic, this is an obvious one. Who's heating up, Stacy? It's Harrison Bader. I know we talked about him at the top of the show, but um, this weekend was just incredible. I mean, you could make the case that he was hot, but he's just easing into everything. Yeah. So we put him in the heating up portion of this segment. But yeah, he's 
He's just great. I like watching him. I like watching him on the bases. I like watching him running the bases. You know, when you got that triple, um, he's just so speedy. Him and Volpe, they're, they're very similar in that way when they run around the bases. And just watching him play defense, it's just so great. Watching a center fielder know what he does out there. It's yeah. nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, man, Bader's just hot. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think you could totally make that argument. Uh, but yeah, we try to give love where we can. So Ian yes. Hamilton. Congratulations. Uh, you know, it means the world to him that on Locked On Yankees, we said, <laughs> Ian Hamilton is pretty hot right now. Uh, pitching matchup, Stace. I think the most interesting one of this series with Oakland is tonight. Yes. JP Sears versus Nestor. JP, we talked about it Friday, actually. Save some bad outings. I think it was one bad outing. I have to double check on the numbers. Either one or two bad outings. Mm-hmm. He's been pitching really well. And you know, I mean, he's. Pro- I don't think he has a vengeance bone in his body no. from all the interactions I've had with J.P. Sears. <laughs> but you know this one's going to have a little extra juice tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, you traded me away. You traded me to the A's. Here we go. I'm going to show you what you're missing. And uh, believe me, J.P., we know. <laughs> We know what we're missing because uh, <laughs> every time the Yankees play a game, you think, wow, all these trades they made and all these guys are hurt. Great. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, I, I really think he's going to come out. He's never, I don't ever really see him with a ton of emotion, but I feel like there's going to be some fist pumping and into yeah, there the might be some there's, adrenaline there's... going, you know, Oh yeah. pitching on the yeah. mound at Yankee stadium and, you know, thinking yeah. that you were probably going to do that as a Yankee, but now you're doing it as an A because you get yeah. traded and yeah, it's a whole. Thing. I feel like there's going to be some cheers too. There, 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 sh- there might be a little bit of love to uh, to him tonight too. I don't think there's not going to be any booing. No, why, why would there be? Why would no. there be? Um, game two, Tuesday night, Drew Rasiski, Clark Schmitz. Game three, Kyle Muller, Johnny Burrito. Kyle Muller has had a weird go of it uh, to start the season in Oakland. Johnny Burrito, kind of as well. Like last couple of starts have been a little weird too. Mm. Um, but again, I think the biggest matchup, of course, is this is this Monday night one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of uh, interesting that it's the first matchup of the series. Usually, we're looking at the series, looking ahead to the series, and we're always seeing yeah. like either the second start or the third start with the two guys that you're like, oh wow, you know. And uh, tonight's JP Sears against Nestor. Now Nestor needs to bounce back a bit. Um, yes, you know he didn't pitch in Tampa because uh, they said he had strep throat. Although he looked fine when he was dumping a uh, bubble gum on people when they walked off the other night. But, you know, I mean, I know when I get strep throat, I am laid out for like a week. So good for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was strep throat, <laughs> like, yeah. like a it phantom was. IL trip. It was Garrett Cole pitch <laughs> Sunday, not Monday. Yeah, and now um, are they thinking maybe we should have put Nestor oops, in the game? Yeah, oops, oops, <laughs> oops. Uh, we'll see. The whole Oakland series, as we've mentioned, will be on Sirius XM. You can listen to John and Susan there, and you'll probably hear our voices too, by the way. Uh, you can always listen to Lockdown Yankees on the Sirius XM app. Again, to our YouTube viewers, you can always download. Well, if you have YouTube Premium, you can just download the video episode, but you can also download the audio side, and that way, if you don't have service, you got us. Um, coming up Tuesday, Stacy on Lockdown Yankees, Luis Severino with some interesting comments over the weekend about his rehab situation. And again, in the context of how things went down last year, too, uh, it's not looking like a match made in heaven right now between Luis Severino and the New York Yankees. We're going to dissect that on tomorrow's show. Uh, but thanks for checking us out here today. That's going to do it. I'm Steve Granado. And I'm Stacy Gotsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.